Hello, I'm an old fart, and I have a guilty pleasure. I like knives. Uh, I'm not an expert or a, an official representative of anything or anyone. I just like knives. I have a collection of small folding pocket knives, and you're joining me on a video as we take a slow tour through that collection. Today we're going to look at this beautiful little knife. This is a Monterey Bay Knives uh, MBK mini old guard. So as the name would suggest, it is the mini version of another knife in their lineup called the old guard, which I have and I reviewed a, a couple of episodes ago and really liked. I loved the old guard. Uh, it, uh, a classic style, a wonderful blade, and an extremely pleasant action. So when Monterey Bay announced that they were coming out with a mini version, I thought, okay, I gotta try that. The only thing I hadn't liked about the Old Guard was it was just a little large for a, in quote, non-threatening gentleman's carry. And I had said, boy, if they made this knife just a little smaller, that would be close to perfect. Well, here we are. This is that knife, just a little smaller. So formally, Monterey Bay Knives, MBK, that's a, a small knife design company in Monterey Bay, California. Uh, and this is the Mini Old Guard. Now, they're out of stock and they're not easy to get. None of their products are, but they uh, they do come up now and then and their stock usually lasts a day or so. It's not like the 30 seconds to buy situation you get with some of the boutique manufacturers. So these are obtainable. And my advice on this knife is it's going to be worth obtaining. So uh, this is a thumb stud operated knife, dual sided thumb stud. And it is a frame lock, titanium frame lock. It runs on uh, washers, what they call bronze and Teflon washers. So I'm not sure what that means, frankly. I haven't taken it apart. I'm guessing it's a phosphor bronze washer on one surface and a Teflon washer on another surface. But anyway, I have not taken it apart to see. But what I will say is the action is very smooth, both for slow open and for flicking. So very pleasant action to work with. Uh, now being advertised as the mini, it would seem that the size is an important characteristic of, of this knife. So let's have a look at the size in a little more detail. The first obvious comparison, since this is the mini version of the old guard, well, what's the old guard look like? So there's the full-sized old guard. I'm just gonna adjust some light here. There we are, full-sized old guard. And as you can see, the mini is considerably smaller. Is it that about three centimeters smaller, something like that. So, and when I said just a little smaller, well, this is certainly it. Uh, more important measure, of course, is the pocket calculator scale, and it's 0.96 pocket calculators. So, that should uh, register its size internationally. And just let's compare it to a couple of other sort of mid sized knives in the collection. The um, Small Sabenza is a nice mid-size knife, and as you can see, it is slightly larger than a small Sabenza, which is interesting. Um, and my kind of standard reference knife in the mid-size range is the Mini Griptilian, and as you can see, it is noticeably larger than the Mini Griptilian. Um, so it is at the large end of the mid-size knife family. Uh, how about the weight? Well, it is a fairly heavy knife for its size. It's 99 grams, which is noticeably heavier. The small Sabenza is uh, 81 grams, so noticeably heavier than the small Sabenza. The Mini Griptilian is even lighter. It's 80 grams to 99, noticeably heavier. So you f there's a lot of metal here. You feel this knife in your hand. The blade is exactly three inches long, so look up whether that is important to you. Under three inch, over three inch, or exactly three inch. I don't understand those laws. Uh, a beautiful, simple drop point shape and M390 steel, which I really like. I think that's probably my favorite knife steel. Not easy to sharpen, but uh, takes a beautiful mirror edge and lasts for a long time. 
the body of the knife is a sort of dual slab. The one side, the clip side, as you can see, is solid titanium, titanium backspacer. There is a steel liner in there over which is the presentation side scale. And in this particular version, the presentation side is marbled carbon fiber. And uh, I'm not sure, I think I recall that there were other options available when it went on sale. It's all in stock now. Uh, but it would certainly be like them to offer a variety of options over time. The clip is milled titanium. Uh, and just looking at this side and looking at the clip, if you know Monterey Bay knives, you can immediately see that this is a Ray Laconico design, because this is classic Ray. Reasonably straight sides, reasonably constant radius elliptical ends, and a milled clip that is straight sides, curved on the end, slot in the middle. Uh, this looks very much like several other Ray Laconico knives, and it's, it's kind of nice that it has that constant feeling of being part of a family of designs. The uh, clip is canted so that it doesn't sit on the lock bar, which is, I think, an important design thing. It makes the knife a little easier to open that the clip is not pressing on the lock bar. Uh, there is a lanyard hole and it's offset so that it doesn't interfere with the clip. I haven't put a lanyard in this and haven't felt the need to, but it's there if, if that interested you. Uh, is it ambidextrous? No, very much not. So it does have double-sided thumb studs. However, on this side, there's very little space there. I, I think you would have quite a challenge getting your finger in there to open it left-handed. Maybe you could. Um, and of course, the frame lock and the clip are very much one-sided. There's no option to move the clip to the other side, and, and they don't make a left-handed version that I'm aware of. So very much not an ambidextrous knife. Monterey Bay Knives does not make knives, they design them. These are manufactured for them uh, in China. I don't know who the manufacturer is, but with the quality that is here, the, the tolerances, the fit and finish, the materials, I would not be surprised if it was Wee Knives or one of its uh, uh, subsidiaries, but I do not know that. All I, all I know is that they say manufactured in China. So uh, what do I like about this knife? I like a lot about this knife. I like the M390 steel a lot. I think, as I mentioned, that's a beautiful steel. And I like the blade. I think it's the perfect size. I like the elegant shape, simple drop point. And I like the fact that it's not over decorated. In fact, it's hardly decorated at all. The presentation side is completely clean. Nothing written there at all. On the other side, you have just the Monterey Bay Knives logo, MBK, nothing else. Um, and uh, hidden away, in the uh, back of the blade, if you look in there to see it, is the M390 logo. So simple, unadorned blade. And I will say that it had a, uh, a great factory edge. Coming right out of the box, it was very sharp. And something that bugs me on some knives, coming right out of the box, it had a good symmetric bevel. Looking at it under a magnifier, like the amount of sharpened bevel on both sides was as close to equal as I could tell. Uh, so I had no, felt no temptation to immediately resharpen it just to get it symmetrical. And I have not resharpened it yet. It's got a wonderful edge that it's holding very well. Uh, it is a good sturdy frame lock. So you get a solid lock and a very secure feeling using this knife. Comfortable to hold. Even though it's a smaller knife, it does just fit four fingers. And the clip, being fairly small and low and not tilted up at the end, doesn't create any hot spots. So it is comfortable to hold so, and a, a beauty to cut with. Now, a few things I don't like. Well, first, I love the carbon fiber as a, a scale material. And I think the marbled carbon fiber is very pretty. But one of the problems with carbon fiber is that the smoothed, finished carbon fibers do tend to pit. You have to be very careful watching for that. And on this knife, I, I am sorry to say that there is some pitting here. If I get the light, there we are. You can just see off the pivot screw here, there's a little bit of a pit that has collapsed into the carbon fiber there. I have to look to see it. It's not bothering me, but it's, it's too bad that it's there. 
Now, if I mentioned that in uh, in any of the online knife forums, I know what everybody would say. They would say, well, send it back and they'll make it right. And I have no doubt that they would because Monterey Bay Knives uh, customer service is excellent. I have no doubt that if I sent this back, they would replace that uh, scale cover and I would be extremely happy. But I'm not going to do that. I don't live in the United States. Uh, and if you don't live in the United States, you understand this. Every time you ship a knife across your border, you're taking the risk of never seeing it again. Uh, some import or export official may decide that it is a prohibited weapon uh, and uh, seize it. And so uh, I'm not going to be sending this back. I'm going to live with it like it is. Maybe I'll contact them and see if I could just send them the scale and have it replaced. Uh, that might be worth doing, but certainly not shipping the knife. Now, the other thing I'll say about it is that it is a little harder to flick open than the full-sized. Just let me pull the full-sized in here for a second. There's the full-sized um, old guard, and it flicks easily and beautifully. Now this one, the mini, flicks just as easily when you get everything right. Okay? But it's a little harder to set up your fingers to get that flick for two reasons. It's so being a little smaller and a little more uh, cramped. It's easier to be accidentally pressing on the lock bar while you're holding the knife, just because there's less other places to put your fingers. So it's easy to press on the lock bar, which of course holds the knife closed. And also being smaller just means the angles are a little more, uh, what, critical. You know, you, you need an angle that is going that way to start it moving and then that way to flick it open. And that radius is smaller on a smaller knife. So it's just, it's a little harder to get everything right for that fast flick. You probably notice here that in fact, what I've developed the habit of keeping my index finger off the knife in order to flick it open. Because if I have my index finger on the knife, I'm always, almost always pressing on the lock bar. So it took me a little while, there we are. So position my finger there, it will flick beautifully. It took me a little while to figure out how to do it. And it takes you know, a second longer to set up to flick it open. You have to you know, position your fingers correctly and then, and then it'll flick. So it's not as perfect a flicking operation as on the full sized. But in return, you get this elegant and compact knife. So anyway, that's uh, one of the things. And I think I may have demonstrated there as well. There's a slight tendency to misfire. Because flicking is just a little bit harder, I do occasionally, now I can't make it happen, of course, I do occasionally get a misfire. There we are, a misfire, where I, you know, my thumb slips off and it hasn't opened all the way. So that's, you know, that's kind of a natural product of a smaller knife. So I can't have it both ways. So um, let's go through my rating systems for knives. The, the first, uh, my internationally unknown NTGK rating, which is for non-threatening gentleman's knife, which is really the thing I say I collect. I'll rate that in two parts, non-threatening and gentleman's knife. So for non-threatening, I'm going to score this knife very well. Uh, it has a, an elegant, not scary shape, okay, a simple, elegant blade shape. No you know, tactical, weapony looking jagged bits on it or you know, pictures of goblins attacking or anything like that. So it's not designed to look scary. More important is the mechanism. You can open this knife slowly and in front of nervous people. It's very important to do that. You don't flick a knife in front of nervous people. And in front of very nervous people or people you really don't know, you can even open it two-handed. So that's one of the beauties of thumb studs. You can take the studs in your hand and open it this way. So that is really not scary. So I like that a lot. Um, as I said, yeah, the, the, I won't rate this as a bad thing, but do not flick knives in front of nervous people because they'll go, ah, switchblade, and you know, you've lost any chance to back away from having scared them. So I'm going to give it an A plus for non-threatening. Now, as a gentleman's knife, it's going to do quite well, not quite that well. Uh, on the good, there's the, the mystique of it being a rare, hard-to-get brand. You know, people say, Monterey Bay Knives. Oh, what's that? I've heard of them. Oh, you can't get those. You know, the, uh, I went to the local Walmart and they didn't have one by the front door, so they're unobtainable. So that, um, that rare mystique adds a bit to its kind of gentleman carry class. Premium materials, 
beautiful titanium carbon fiber, M390 steel, just, you know, gentlemen's carrying things should be premium materials. Elegant design, the classy marbling of the carbon fiber. I just think it is a beautiful knife as a gentleman's carry. A couple of minuses as a gentleman's carry. One is the clip is shallow carry, so you have no choice. That much is sticking out of your pocket. And it is heavy, and being heavy, that much is sticking out of your pocket, and it is deforming your pocket. You know, so it's, it's quite noticeable on the lines of your clothing that there is something there. So that'll knock it down from an A plus to an A as a gentleman's carry. And so with an A plus as non-threatening and an A as gentleman, I'm going to give it an A as an NT GK. My next rating is KM rating, knife nerd rating. What will my knife nerd friends think of this knife? Well, they will love it, I think. The premium materials, carbon fiber, M390 steel, the fact that it's rare, great blade, beautiful looking blade, beautiful cutting blade, beautiful grinding on the blade, and the very pleasant mechanism to work with, but with the occasional misfire. So I'm going to give it an A and not an A+, because of that slight awkwardness with the opening mechanism. And my final rating, my CMR, cut myself rating, I will score an E. Uh, it's a simple rating. I have never cut myself, not even a minor nick with this knife, so it gets an A as a CMR. And that brings us to the end of this look at this beautiful little knife, the Mini Old Guard by Monterey Bay Knives. A beautiful, well-made, classically styled knife in the mid-sized range which is a great blend of uh, non-threatening carryability and, and good cutting performance. I like it a lot. I think it's a, a near-perfect example of the non-threatening gentleman's knife. Thanks for watching. See you again.